Hello everyone! Welcome back again to my YouTube channel, Province Life with Giselle. So for today's video, I am with my friend Shay, and I'm um, very happy to be with her today. And for today's video, we will talk about being a single mom or being a, um, a single parent. And we have, we have different experiences of that, and we will talk about um, our past experiences in life, and we will be happy to share all of that with you. So... First, thank you so much, Shay, for, you know, being here and for coming and it was nice to see you again. So I would start, um, I would start myself talking about being a single parent, how I handle those, you know, situations and what are the struggles that I faced when, um, because talking about single parent, they would think that it's really hard and yes it's really hard because you're alone in life and no one if there's a problem you cannot rely on someone because you're you're alone so for me um thanks god that i have a family first because they are the one um who helped me they are the one ever ever since i got pregnant my mother was there so i'm very thankful that i have a family which I could rely on something that if I have a problem, there's my mom there, you know, being with me and always um, there for me. So, um, though it was really hard, and yes, because I'm a single mom, it's two years old, and it was really hard. But um, uh, the struggles in life will just come and go, come and go, and that's life. We all experience struggles in life. And um, my experience as before I get pregnant is... Um, I studied at uh, high school. I was graduated at grade grade twelve, senior high, and um, after that, I supposedly go to Bohol. I mean, I go already at Bohol. I went to Bohol, and um, I I should continue my college there because my mama cannot afford me to send in college in here because my mama just working for you know for food if she has salary only for food so um i was in bohol before and then um their culture i didn't adapt their culture i got sick like uh severe sick so my mama planned to take me back home and then just find a job so i went back here in negros and i'd spent around one and one month there in bohol and as i go back here in domagheri and then um, I was finding a job and then I found a job which like an embroidery I was an embroidery person and um, after that um, I got pregnant with my two-year-old and with the Filipino it's a Filipino guy and it was so sad because um, the guy didn't ever try to help me with that or didn't ever try to support me as well so it's okay it's okay that's life or maybe that's my destiny in life and i could not control things there are things that we can't control also so that's my experiences before it was hard but i'm very happy right now and contented if you don't mind me asking um how long have you been together um we've been together just a three three to five months i think yeah and then i got pregnant and then we're not really like close to each other especially his family we're not you know before just meeting somewhere you know like that so that's my experiences with him before and he's from here he's from valencia. he's from valencia yes okay. and you've never seen each other after that. yes never never <laughs> ever <laughs> valencia is just a small yeah town. yeah i know and you've never i never meet him yeah. like accidentally no no maybe god really planned that we'd never but we don't know we don't know but for me if you would ask me also that if there's a path there there's a chance that i would go back to him i would say no i would never i, I would never go back to him or i said no as in no yep. definitely not i mean i mean what is there to yeah yeah because why would he try to show up with me when my kid is already growing and then yeah. at the time that I need him before like I need something for my pregnancy for the baby he didn't even try to show up so it's useless I mean I don't need him or I'm happy with the life that I have right now yeah I mean you know I have two children and uh, they're both from different dads 
And you know what? One thing I learned is that you don't really have to ask somebody to step up to be a dad. Mm. Um, they knew that you've gotten. I mean, I mean, they know that they've gotten you pregnant, and of course, you, you told them and this and that. And um, I'm pretty sure that you know, yeah, they're full aware yeah. that we are pregnant, and for them to not be able to actually be there for us in every step of the way and not even financial yes. support and all that um, I think that you don't really have to force someone to be a dad like if they knew that they've gotten you pregnant they already know their responsibilities yes right so you don't really have to like you know hey I need diapers yeah I need you to uh, pay for your child's tuition and this yeah. and that. They, you don't need to ask them I don't need to ask them they know their responsibilities yeah. and if they're not willingly giving you the support especially financial support then for me personally I would not ask them yeah right because if I asked you for like let's say three four times and you're not paying for your child yeah. I'm not going to ask you again because as a dad you know your responsibilities are yes right. yes they yeah. agree it's the same with um, Oh, by the way, during the first interview, uh, well, not during, but after the interview, my, what do you call this, my eldest daughter's dad actually sent me a message saying, hey, I saw your interview with your new friend. I was like, okay. <laughs> so he saw the interview. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I think that's one thing I learned that you don't need to force anyone for them to do their responsibilities. Yes, yes. It's not nice to have somebody being forced to do things. Yeah, I agree. So you tell you told me that um, the interview before was done, and then your ex boyfriend um, noticed about it, and then try to message you back again. Is he um, supporting your your old daughter right now? So what about uh, the other one? The other one um, is a different story okay. compared to the first one. Um, the first one was, I've already said um, on the first interview that, you know, he was here for three weeks, I think, or I, I cannot recall how many weeks, but and then he uh, went back to his country and never came back. Um, actually, I'm going to uh, give you guys a little story about that. Yeah. Um, what happened was that I was with him for a few weeks, and then I didn't know I was pregnant until it was already two months. Oh, I see. Because okay. I was like, I knew I was delayed. Okay. And I was concerned about it. It didn't occur to me that I might have been pregnant. Yeah. So I went to the uh, I went to the doctor. And had a test and all that and she was like um I think I'm gonna have you under PT pregnancy yeah. test yeah I was like I don't think there's no there's you know I, I don't think there's <laughs> you're positive and pregnant yeah yeah and, I, and she was like I think I ha I need you to undergo a pregnancy <laughs> really? test but anyway so I was pregnant for like I think maybe seven weeks or eight weeks at that time and then I messaged the uh, dad and I was telling him hey you know oh. I'm, I'm pregnant yeah. and he was like are you sure it's mine yes yes and you know when you're not doing anything when you when you know yourself that you're not um, sleeping around because I was 20 at the time and still timid meek and shy and all that yeah I was not out there to date anyone yeah right so I was like I was certain he was the only partner I had at the time okay. and for him to actually say something like are you sure it's not mine it was really like a big slap on my face okay. so I was like I was really disheartened by what he said and he said well after that he said something like oh I'm not ready um, you need to abort the baby or something and you know the same castle. situation with myself. <laughs> the same situation, saying abort that baby. It was 
demonic words. I yep. it's not acceptable words for me. When he found out that I was pregnant, all the letters was caps lock, honestly, and saying I I could not be a dad. I was not ready to be a dad. But what's on my mind then why are you trying to, you know, be with me or try to touch me like that if you're not ready for something or you know I would I think that in I think that in the end he just playing with me right now, like that or and then I was like he said abort the baby or like and I was like oh my god it makes me my tears like I didn't even notice that I was crying because imagine abort the baby how could you abort the baby like the baby doesn't even know you know it's an angel like that so after all of that it just gave me an idea that he's not a responsible to, a responsible father and he's not he's not deserving he's not deserving also so i did not run myself into him yeah i mean you know for you to actually do something like that like you know abort the baby because yeah. we grew up as catholics yes right? yes i'm a catholic yeah yes. so we go to church like for me i went to church like friday to sundays and I was in a very good background oh, yeah. and it was actually the first time I heard of the word abortion and I actually had to look it up <laughs> yeah. and and you know and see what it means yeah and yeah so he said something like oh I'm not ready and you need to abort the baby and I was like I was like it's okay you know I I don't need you I yeah. I can, I can, you know, I can get through this alone. Yeah. So fast forward, um, our daughter is already almost eighteen years old this July, and yeah, it's actually his loss wow. for being, you know, unable to be with his daughter's life. Like, the good thing with us single moms is that we have our children's attention twenty four seven. Yes. Yes. And that is something that their fathers will never experience with our children. Yeah. Right? So, but the bad thing, not really the bad thing, but, well, maybe it's a bad thing. Um, when the children get sick, you know, sometimes, for me, I, I'm not sure with you, but sometimes I feel that um, I'm in a very vulnerable state when the children are sick especially when we're really tight with the budget yes yes we I feel that you know I'm very vulnerable and that I just wanted to just like you know break down and cry and and yeah, yeah. because sometimes it's really not just financial sometimes we need emotional support just as financial as well yeah. right yeah so yeah yeah so for me i went through like that also like my son was really sick sick as in so much sick and we are nothing mm -hmm. so i'm lucky that i have a mom you know we borrowed money from other so that we can just go to check up and buy some medicine before i've never met my boyfriend we do that and then mama is working too to gain money just to pay that you know like that and I was a hands-on on my baby and I was trying even to look a job or maybe something like an online job or maybe something like I could bring my baby and work to other place like I washing clothes like that um, it it's really hard when you're a single mom also but it's it's like this advantages and advantages so I'm very happy for my life right now without the biological father of my son and um, because my mom standing as a father ever since in my life also and he's the she's the one who stand as a father of my um, little kid and she was with me for from the very beginning until right now so um, I would for me I I don't know but I just don't try to chase someone you know that it's not deserving me also like why would I what would, why would I force him to love me, you know, if he can't even show, he, he can't even show something that he likes me also. So I would never try to do that again in my whole life. That's my learn, learn, I learned, I learned um, a lot when my past uh, experience before, past experience before. So um, 
I would never, I would never do again something that could ruin my life. You know, like I, especially I'm not sure to this person. I'm not sure if he committed, he commits on everything, or I'm not sure if the words he tried to throw me is true, or maybe he was just. He was just trying to play with me again, so I would never do that. I would rather to choose an older man or a matured person so that um, um, a lot of experiences and could teach me, you know, that this is right, this is wrong, could help me also to grow being a matured person. So Right. Yeah. And you mentioned earlier about um, your mom standing as a dad, and that's also one thing um, I mean, one good thing about us is that us single moms stand as the fathers and yeah. I mean the dad and the mom to yeah. our children. And sometimes I don't understand because um, you know being a single mom, it's kind of like um, sometimes we are being discriminated and being yes. marginalized in this country probably in other countries too. Actually, a few days ago, I was watching this, um, I think he's American, he's an American blogger, and um, he, her, I mean, his channel was talking about Filipinas, and he is so against um, single, I mean, single parents, I mean, single, Filipina single moms. He's okay. against, yeah. yes, basically. Yeah. Because you know he said this and he said that, and I think for me, um, we we are so underrated, really. Because I don't see why you could actually discriminate us when, first, you don't actually know what we go through. Yes. Second, yes. second, we stand as mom and dad to our children. So yes. in fact, I mean, instead of actually discriminating us, we do actually yeah. deserve praise because, I mean. We are dads and moms. Yes, yes. Right? We are doing both roles. Yeah. So I don't see why people actually discriminate us because of because we are single moms. Yes. Perfectly said. Yes. She's totally right. And um, even my neighborhood saying, "You're a single mom. You don't have future like that. You don't have. You cannot grow because you didn't go to work. You, you I mean, you didn't go to school, and then you can't find job. Well." For me, honestly, if there is an offer for me to job, like I would love to to work. Honestly, I would love to work, whatever work is, as long as it's it's a good job. Because I, I've experienced work uh, many times. I've like working. I mean, when I was just young, I used to work. I used to work Sunday and Saturday. I used to work at the farm. I used to work at the house everything and then after I graduated senior high school I worked at the Robinsons in Dumaguete I work as a um, embroidery there and then in the Mobby Lunch also I work as a receptionist there so I love to work I love to work but just this time um, pandemic really hurts a lot of business yeah. slowing down and then um, for me I have a kid also that needs more attention it's like it's very different when your my mama is the one who took care of my son, and that's me also. I think the best is your mom. Like me, I will be the one who will take care of my son, so that when he's growing, he would know that I was really there for him, even if he doesn't have a father. You know, I was with him, and um, he would think the same thing. But I think to my mom that I'm his mother, I'm his father also. That's I think of my mom she's my dad she's my mom so i want him to realize that being a single mom is a hero it's a hero honestly we are basically yeah, we heroes, are heroes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i'm very happy to talk about that i was i was impressed by the word you said we are discriminate you know there are people against being a single mom you know they should be proud because we handle those things which is it's a hard situation being a single mom and um, we need to do hands on, we need to work, we need to send them to school, we need to give mm -hmm. them clothes, we need them to, we, we, we need to give them a good shelter like that. So I'm very happy that you made that with yourself. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, you know, because I don't really understand that 
um, I don't want to mention his um, um, channel, but not only him, but you know, even co-Filipinos. Yeah, Fili uh, yeah, yeah. Um, we are really uh, being discriminated, and even laws are our laws here are. Dis I mean, you know, it's really discriminating us, and um, it's yeah. So I think that. You know, for people to actually discriminate, discriminate us or marginalize us, um, Filipino single moms, I think it's not right. Yeah. Um, you know, we hustle hard, we work hard. Yeah. We barely don't have time sometimes to to comb our hair or yeah. to or to beautify ourselves. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, because we're we're working so hard for our children, and then they're just. People who are like, oh, she's a single mom. She's not yeah. worth it. Yeah, I mean, and then think other would think she's a single mom because she's the kind of a person who who loves to hang out yeah. in the night like that. A lot of um ways. I mean, we have different ways why we became a single mom like that. And some it's not our fault, or maybe some would just love to be single mom like that. But for me, I didn't. For of course, I didn't. I didn't want to be a single mom only. I want a partner, the father of my. But he, he just he just showed to me that he deserve, you know, he's that yeah. Deserve it. He doesn't deserve it. He's not responsible in anything. So, yeah, that's it. Single mom to not be discriminated. I do as well, and we we deserve respect. We deserve respect. We deserve to be to be loved also and not discriminated. But a lot of people, different countries, whatever it is. So I've learned from you also, and thank you so much for sharing your <laughs> your very um, good and bad experiences in life. And it's so nice to meet you again. It's so nice to to know your story. And um, again, thank you, thank you so much for being with me. Actually, guys, um, she was a uh, teaching um, an English lesson, right, with my. Um, cousin and with my niece Arlene, Shinshin, and Myreen we're actually doing a study here and then after we just I just interview her a little bit to know more about her life so as you know already and um, again thank you so much for being with my channel and I will gonna end this uh, video so I hope you enjoy watching our video with Shay and please don't forget to subscribe my channel uh, province of Yourself. please like share comment and spread my videos all over the world and, and of course don't forget uh shay travels yes. shay travels please subscribe to her channel she has a good um videography her channel is all about nature it's all about mostly nature mostly yes. nature so again thank you thank you so much guys for watching see you in my next video god bless you all bye thank you for watching